Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. For the next 30 minutes, you will travel back to a time when radio controlled the transmission and the mind created all your fears. Welcome to Classic Dark Radio. Roma Wines presents Suspense. Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud. Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the man in black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, Roma Wines bring you the remarkable actress whose performance in the Paramount picture For Whom the Bell Tolls won her an Academy Award, Katina Paxinou. And so, with a woman in red, and with the performance of Madame Paxinou, we again hope to keep you in Suspense. All of London, few houses were so fine, so correct, so austere, and yet gracious with age as number 30, Henrik Square. That was true of its reception room, true of its long, quiet hallway along which the young man led the girl. Aunt Rita, this is Miss Julia Ross. The woman rested her knitting in her lap and slowly turned around. She was a giant of a woman, a woman of 60 in a bright red dress. For several seconds, she stared fixedly across at Julia. Then, in an instant, a soft, gentle smile came on her face. Perfect. How perfect. I beg your pardon? Here. Come over here, child. Let me look at you. That's it. Over there, child. Sit there on the divan. And, and Carl, I think I shall have my milk now. And Miss Ross will have some with me. Will you? Won't you, Miss Ross? Oh, some milk? Oh, but I, I some never... Some warm milk and a biscuit. Of course you will. I always find it very sustaining. Uh, Carl, you heard the young lady. <laughs> and stop staring at her. You've seen a pretty girl before. Was I staring? <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Ross. Harry now like a nice boy. Is he your secretary? Let us say that he has been uh, substituting... Until I find someone like you. You mean, you think I will do? <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> well, I... All I know is when I saw your advertisement in the paper, Miss Crable, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. Wanted secretary, Irish girl, blonde hair, age about 25. It was all so perfect. It sounded just... Well, it was like me. And just like Sheila. That was my former secretary, Miss Ross. You, who passed away just recently. Oh. She had been with me many years. I'm so sorry, Miss Crable. I had the feeling that my loss might be lessened if I could really replace her. <laughs> An old lady's whim, of course. Uh, because no one is ever exactly like someone else. You, for example, I'm sure you have friends, acquaintances... Relatives, perhaps, uh, you see now and then. Uh, Sheila oh, didn't, but, but, but you see, I don't. What I mean is, my parents aren't living, and so far as friends or acquaintances are concerned, I I hadn't had much time lately, and... Well, my landlady, of course, I know her, but... Unbelievable, Miss Ross, because it's so perfect. You see, the less time you have for outside attractions, the more time you have for me. The oh. milk, Aunt Rita, and the biscuits. Uh, will this table do here? That will be fine, dear. And leave us alone. Oh, very well. My aunt is a very domineering woman, Miss Ross. <laughs> oh, but also a generous one, I think. <laughs> Your milk, dear. And a biscuit? Oh, just the milk, thank you. Miss Crabo, there's something you must know. Uh, well, don't hesitate, child. Miss Crabo, I... I'm afraid I'm not quite what you think. I mean, I've never really done any secretarial work before. Oh. <laughs> I've had some business training, a little but not oh. actual experience. <laughs> I I mean it, Miss Crabo. I, I lied in what I wrote you. I, I wanted the position and I needed it so much. And... You silly girl. You mean 
You still want me? Certainly. Now finish your milk before it, it gets cold. Oh. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there will be very little secretarial work for you to do. I shall want uh, a sort of, uh, yes, a companion. Now, I shall want you to start immediately. Oh. You will, of course, live here in the house and... Live in the house? But of course, you are my companion. Oh, but I didn't understand that I... Yes. Oh, well, then, I think perhaps I should make plans accordingly. I mean, I'd better leave now. I oh. I shall want to go to my boarding house and cancel my lodging. Oh, there will be plenty of time for that, child. Carl and I generally take an afternoon stroll and would like you to... But, but you see, there'll be other arrangements. People I must see and people? things... People? To... But you said you knew no people. Oh, yes. Well, um... Miss Crabo, I have no qualifications for this position. I... Oh. Why, uh, child? What's the matter? I don't know. Suddenly, I... I feel so drowsy. Well, then, I would just lie back on the diamond. Oh, but there's no reason for it. I... Oh, but there is, child. You are weary from the strain, the uncertainty, the ceaseless search for work in a strange and friendless city. The milk. Oh. There was something and in it. so you relax uh -huh. your nerves. They go to sleep. Yes. Sleep. Carl. Oh, Carl. Yes, Aunt Rita. Have you finished the note, oh, dear? Oh, yes, only this moment. I... Well, don't just stand there. Let me see. Aunt Rita, please. She is so harmless. <laughs> and so perfect. And now read me the note. Oh. Uh, to Department KL, Southern hmm. Development, leaving at once for Dublin, Ireland. We'll communicate in ten days. Ten days, Carl? We won't need so much time. Make that five. Just as you say, Aunt Rita. Then sign it Sheila Campbell and post it to British Intelligence. Tonight for Suspense, Roma Wines bring you as star Madame Katina Paxinou, whom you have heard in the prologue to The Woman in Red by Anthony Gilbert. Tonight's adventure in Suspense. Remember the old saying, the grass is always greener in the other fellow's yard? Well, you might agree with the truth of that statement if you happen to overhear a conversation like this. Let's imagine we're seated in the smart and festive Club Montmartre in Havana, Cuba. An American has just complimented his Cuban friend on the fine quality of Havana tobacco. Graciously, the Cuban replies, but you of the United States need have no envy of us. Nature has made a great gift of perfection to your country, too. The magnificent wine which we are all so fond of. It is Roma wine, made in your own California. Friends, that little scene is typical of many countries where wine is truly enjoyed. For in other lands, Roma wines must be imported over long distances from our own California. A luxury to be enjoyed on special occasions. While lucky you can enjoy these superb Roma wines as a daily delight. With no import duty, no expensive shipping charges added to your cost for Roma wines. Whichever one of Roma Wine's many different types your own taste test names as favorite, you'll agree here is truly superb wine that could come only from truly choice wine districts. And you'll say, no wonder Roma Wines are America's largest selling wines. I'll spell out the name for you. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our sound stage our star, Katina Paxinou, in The Woman in Red, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Feeling better, Julia, after your little nap? No. No, I don't feel better. Well, the walk and a little something to eat will do wonders for you. There is a little tea shop up here. At I the don't common. want anything to eat. Oh. And please don't hold on to my arm. Oh, like now, that. child, is that a way to talk? You seem a bit shaky, that's all. Here we are. Carl, you wait with Julia. Oh. 
I'll just look in first to see that it's no too crowded. And now you have to hold my arm. Oh, no, wait, Miss Ross. I don't have to hold. Hey, no, don't, don't. Let me go. What are you doing, Miss Ross? Why do you run like that? Please, don't you understand? If I'm to move in with Miss Crabo, I've, I've got to get in touch with my landlady. But there'll be plenty of time. Plenty of time. What do you want with me? Why are you both... Oh, Carl. Yes, Aunt Rita? Come along, you two. No. Oh, please, you're making yourself worried about nothing. My aunt, it is just that she's a peculiar... Hurry, lady. hurry, children. Uh, then remember that I am here. I have already ordered for oh, us. Oh, fine, Aunt Rita. Our table, this is it? Yes, sir, here in the corner. Uh, Miss Crabble. Thank you, Mr. James. And Sheila will sit huh? here to my left. Of course. Miss Sheila. Miss Sheila? What? This is your place here, Miss Sheila. Sheila? Why are you calling me Sheila? <laughs> what is it? Why are they laughing? Pay no attention, dear. Just sit down, please. This woman called me Sheila. You both did. My name is... I know. I know, dear. It is Julia. <laughs> Everything is all right. Sh shall I serve the tea now? If you will, please. Uh, now, Sheila, sit down, dear, like a nice girl. No. What, dear? I'm... I'm going to the restaurant. Sheila! It's all right, Miss Crabo. Don't bother. There's no other exit from that room. Oh, I'm so sorry to impose on you, Mr. James. I had no idea she would be so difficult. Oh, don't give it a thought. Once you explained uh, the situation, we were only too glad to help. Of course, uh, I'd never seen your secretary. I had no idea that... Uh... It's only a recent development. Oh, yes. Shall I pour the young lady's tea now? No, thank you. I can manage. Yes. You know, I was just saying to Mrs. Blandin the other day, I says... I wonder if Miss Crabow and her nephew are still in the neighbourhood, I says. Why, they haven't been in my shop for ages, I says. And she says, no, Ah, yes. You see, Mrs. James, uh, we don't dare leave her for long. Uh, for her own protection, that is. Huh? Protection? Uh, yes, we are a little worried about suicide. Oh, oh, yes. Aunt Rita, Sheila's coming. Uh, well, just call me in case I can help. Thank you. Oh, here you are, dear. Carl, help Sheila into her chair. Oh, yes. Sheila... Thank you, Carl. Relax now, dear, and drink your tea. It's all ready for you. My tea in this cup? No, I won't drink it. You won't drink it? Sheila, what? You're pouring, pouring it into your saucer. <laughs> dear, everybody's staring at you, laughing at you. There's nothing for them to laugh at. I simply prefer to pour my own cup of tea. And that's exactly what I shall do. But, but I... Dear, you don't think I... Do you really believe that I, I... I put something in that first cup of tea? Yes. Yes, I do. You did it before, and there's no reason to think you wouldn't do it again. Sheila! Very well, then. Drink your tea. Only hurry. I don't think I can endure much more. Never mind. I shall hurry. I'm just as eager to leave as you. And I'm going straight to the police. Oh, now you're not starting that again. Are you insane? Do you think I'm helpless, that I can't get away from you? That I shall simply stand here and... Oh, it, it's happening. What, dear? What's oh, happening? You, you had it in the teapot. Oh, you're tired again, aren't you, child? Is there something oh. I can do, Miss Crabble? These attacks, Mrs. James, they, they leave her quite exhausted. Oh. If, you, if you, uh, you'd be good enough to open the door. Of course, Miss Crabble, of course. No. Yes. No. She, she must be taken straight to her room, Carl. Yes. Uh, please, if you just give her a hand. That's it. That's fine. You are really such a help to me, Carl. Here we are, Sheila. Right here. Now, just go to bed, dear. Let me alone. Come along then, Carl. Uh, Sheila is quite tired. Yes, Aunt Rita, I shall. You, you said you'd always be here. You've got to help me. What can I do? Here. I've had it in my pocket. A note. Are oh, you coming, dear? Uh, right away, Aunt Rita. It's to my landlady. I wrote it in the restroom at the tea shop. Here, mail it to her. It's my only chance. But I, I can't keep this. Oh, Carl! I, uh, she's coming. She, uh, yes, Aunt Rita. You can do it. You've got to do it. Good night, Sheila. 
How very slow you are, Carl. Oh, was I so very long? <laughs> oh, you like her, I can see that. A letter, I imagine. She gave you a letter to post. A letter? Oh, no, I, I was just locking the door. Ah, yes, of course. Perhaps I have letters on my mind, dear. After that episode with Sheila. <laughs> the first Sheila Campbell, that is. Uh, dear, hand me my knitting. Please. That's a nice boy. Do you know, I'm continually amazed at the stupidity of these English. Can you imagine that girl, that, that supposedly trained agent, dropping that note? <laughs> and addressed, mind you, to the British intelligence. It was very alert of you, Carl, finding it. <laughs> Thank you. Enough. If you excuse me, I'm rather tired. But... Uh, yes, uh, this espionage, it's not a restful a service. Sometimes I wonder if Burling really appreciates the risk we have taken. Yes, the girl had to be disposed of. There was no doubt of it. That was her report on us. All the facts... Aunt Rita, we've gone over this a thousand times. I really am tired. Mm, me... Yes. You were right in realizing what, bad to be, uh, what had to be done. It was just that you acted too... Please, Aunt Rita, exactly I explained too hastily, all that. Too thoughtfully, too violently. I couldn't help it, I tell you. She rushed into the telephone room out there. I ran after her, and that, that stupid catch lock pinned us in. She went to pieces, pounding on the door, screaming, tearing at me. I didn't know what I was doing. There was that bookend, the big one. I lost my head, that's all. It's all your fault. Why didn't you unlock the door? Where I were you? I simply want you to remember that every incident counts. Because of you, we cannot produce Sheila Campbell's remains. And we certainly can't allow the police to tear up the cellar to find them. Because of you, we shall have to produce a substitute body. A substitute Sheila Campbell, who will satisfy the authorities completely. We have her, and I don't, I don't intend to lose her. The note, please. The note? The one that girl just gave you to mail. I don't know what you're talking about. All I know is you don't have to use this girl. You could get somebody else, somebody just as good. She's not right for it. She... Not right for it. A girl who denies her identity, who shrieks of drug drinks, persecution. She is ideal. The police will accept her as a suicide without giving it a second thought. Yes, yes, if they knew she was really insane, but she isn't. Don't you see? She isn't. She isn't. <laughs> just ask those people at this tea shop and that foolish Mrs. James. She will tell you. <laughs> she will tell the whole neighborhood. Oh, Mrs. James, a few neighborhood gossips. They aren't enough. You have to have someone professional, an authority. Listen to me. Our not to, to British intelligence will divert them for just five days. Within that time, Julia Ross must commit suicide. And we will see that she does. No. No, I won't. I won't go through with it, I tell you. I see. <laughs> What a pity it would be if the police learned who was the last person seen with the first Sheila Campbell. You, you wouldn't. You wouldn't turn me over. This espionage call, it's a very demanding trade. A note, please. Huh. Thank you. Thank you, dear. I knew it was an oversight. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, could you tell me if a Miss Crabo lives here? Miss Cr Why, yes, this is her home, but it, 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 she's rather busy upstairs, however. Oh, uh, yes, Aunt Rita? Was that someone at the door? I thought... Oh. How do you do, Miss Crabo? My name is Turner, Dr. Turner. Dr. Turner? Yes, I happened to drop into the tea shop yesterday, uh, Mrs. James' shop, you know, and she told me about your situation. Yes? Well, I thought I might be of some service. My field, you see, is psychiatry. Yes. Yes, I see. Oh, how very thoughtful, Doctor. Uh, please, uh, won't you come right up? Well, thank you. Uh, Miss Campbell's room is up in this floor, Doctor. I thought you might as well see her at once. I know how busy you must be. Yes. Well, the case has been uh, quite difficult, Miss Crable. In many ways, yes, Dr. Turner. Naturally, I feel that uh, someday with professional guidance and with those things, I can give her patience, understanding. Mm -hmm. I can bring her out of the darkness. 
Until then, here we are. Sheila. Sheila, dear. That is Dr. Turner. Step right in, Doctor. He's coming to visit you, dear. How are you, Sheila? How do you feel? Uh, Doctor, I... I rather think my presence will interfere. Mrs. James has undoubtedly explained. Uh, if you don't mind... Yes, yes. That might be best. Won't you talk to me? It's all right, Sheila. Believe me. I'm a doctor. You're no doctor. No, no, Sheila. Don't call me Sheila. You're here to help her. Help her keep me prisoner here in this house. Uh-uh, stop help it. Help her drive me out of my mind. Help her... Yes, help her to murder me. Sheila, pull yourself together. She's told you, you everything. You to act like this. Told you how to act. You must act. Why don't you leave me alone? Why don't oh, you go away? Oh, excuse me, Dr. Turner, uh, but I became a little bit uneasy. Yes, yes, I can understand. Well, Doctor? Uh, yes, it's persecution mania, clearly enough. She has all the symptoms, the deep melancholia, the stubborn hysterical insistence that she's about to be done away with. Yes? I happen to be attached to the King James General Asylum, and I'm somewhat familiar with this type of case. There is one important thing, Miss Crabo. Over here, please. Yes, Doctor? The uh, matter of Miss Campbell's protection. Her protection? Yes, from herself. You undoubtedly are not aware of it, but uh, her type is often inclined toward uh, suicide. <gasps> How dreadful. In case those tendencies uh, should become apparent... Naturally, you'd let me know. Naturally, Doctor. She would then require professional care. Meanwhile, I'm sure your own treatment will be as effective as any. Patience and understanding. Torture me like this, will they? Murder me here in this house. Sheila! No, I won't let them. I'll kill myself first. Miss Campbell. I'll kill myself. That's what I'll do. The window. Stop her. Oh, Carl, oh, Carl. Oh, yes, the window. Yes, That's it, the window. I'll jump through the window. A young woman, control yourself. Let me go. You don't let me jump. Come, 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 come on, what's going on here? What? What happened? Well, this girl, she just tried to kill herself. I'm afraid this changes things, Miss Crabo. She must be put away. Put away? Yes, as soon as possible. I'll have the men come at once. You mean take her away from me? But you can't. I've looked after her myself. Uh, why can't I go on doing that? Because it's beyond you now, Miss Crabo. No, no. No, you... I'm sorry, but there's nothing else I can do. Would you be good enough to direct me to your telephone? Telephone? Yes, I wish to order a car. Some uh, men from the asylum. Of course. There is a small telephone room right, uh, right on down the hall. Uh, this way, please. I know how you must feel, Miss Crabo. But you see, it's the same. The telephone, thing. Dr. Turner, is in this room, right here. Just sit down there at the desk. Oh, well, thank you. You're sure the young man can handle the girl? I mean... I will go back myself and take charge. Well, that will be safer, I'm sure. Excuse me. Hello? Turner speaking. It's Dr. Turner. I'd like you to send a car right away. And three men. The address? It's number 30... Uh, just a moment. Uh, Miss Crabo. Miss Crabo. Yes, Dr. Turner. I can't open the door. It's locked. Oh, sorry, Doctor. I'll have to get the keys from Carl. Keys to unlock this door? It's a very special look. Lock, Dr. Turner. You don't need any key. Just open the door from your side. Miss Crabo, Miss Crabo. Where are you? Miss Crabo. Aunt Rita, she won't stop crying. I just can't get her to stop. I will get her to stop. A clever one, aren't you, child? <laughs> Pretending to commit suicide so the doctor would take you away. The doctor? Where is he? A splendid idea you had, slipping out that window. We'll see if we can help you this time. No, don't come near me. Carl, huh? we've only a very few seconds. Get her across the no. window. Don't make me do it, Aunt Rita. Please, oh, you don't. You wretched, sniveling coward. Do you want us both to hang? No. Help me get this girl to that go. window. You, you'll be sorry you made yeah. me, Aunt Rita. You will, you will! <laughs> I couldn't help it, Dr. Turner. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. I, I just, just lost my head, that's all. But she made me do it. She made me do it. Don't you see? Don't you understand how it was? 
She made me do it. She drove me, Dr. Turner. All right, now settle down, settle down. <laughs> and do stop calling me Dr. Turner. Stop calling you Dr. You? Well, no, I'm not a psychiatrist. But I'm going to see that you meet one. Huh? I happen to be from British Intelligence, Carl. I suppose I have you to thank for that letter. What? Letter? Yes, the one supposedly signed by Sheila Campbell, telling us she was off to Dublin, Ireland. Oh, yes. It would communicate with us in five days. Well, Aunt Rita, she made me do that, too. <laughs> ah, that was an inexcusable mistake, Carl. You see, Sheila would never have written Dublin, Ireland. No, an Irishman assumes that everybody knows where Dublin is. Uh, how about that, Miss Ross? Am I right? Well, I know where it is, all right. And I'm going back there as fast as I can. Oh, <laughs> now, Julia, London isn't as bad as all that, you know. Maybe not. I suppose it all depends upon the murderers you meet. Why, child, you wouldn't want to meet a nicer lad than Carl here. After all, it isn't everybody who'd pitch his aunt through a bedroom room window just to save your life. Yes, he's really a very nice boy. Sergeant, you'd better take him down to the cellar now and have him show you where he buried Sheila Campbell. <laughs> Aunt Rita, she made me do it. Oh, no, she made you do she that too. A woman of character, Miss Crabo. I'm uh, sure you'll miss her very much. But that's the way it goes. This espionage, Carl, is a very uncertain trade. And so closes The Woman in Red, starring Katina Paxinu. Tonight's tale of suspense. Spotted about the globe, wherever wine grapes grow, there are a few wineries whose products are made for world enjoyment. Among such wineries right here in California are those of Roma. And we who live in America have the pleasure of enjoying Roma wine at exceptionally low cost. For we buy it free of duty and free of excessive shipping costs. For instance, Roma California Sherry is the queen of appetizer wines. And not only that, but a wine so delicious it is suitable to serve at any time, cool or chilled. But no matter what your preference may be, you will find a Roma wine costing far less than you would expect to pay for such distinguished wine. In Roma, you have the old world art of winemaking, plus the extra care, constant tasting and testing, which modern knowledge adds to that ageless art. That's why Roma wines have a universal appeal, why they are America's largest selling wines. I'll spell out the name for you. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is Katina Paxinu. I hope you enjoyed our suspense play this evening and that you don't hate me too much. I'm not really as bad as that. Uh, next week, I, I know you will want to listen when Mr. Orson Welles will be your star. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Don't forget, then, next Thursday for Orson Welles in Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed tonight's entertainment. Now, 
I caution you to subscribe before it's too late, before this broadcast ends, before we 